is up all you GPA type people, this is Tom, and we are bringing you the wild card match of the Hoenn Conference between Hank of the Winnipeg Aqua Jets and Olvone of the Cincinnati Loud Reds. And with me, as always, is Kelly. What is going on, everyone? Under the radar here. How are you all doing tonight? I'm so pumped for this battle. I'm so excited. Me too. So, real quick before we get into this battle, uh, Tom and I, we're going to go over what we as analysts think that they will be bringing to each battle or how it'll be constructed or what have you. Right. And in our, you know, typical fashion, we'll be doing this as a live com because we're just trying to, you know, bring that hype and uh, let the analysts do their analyst thing. But uh, you can start off with Hank's team. What do you think and why? Okay, so with Hank, I think I think his team is kind of pretty standard since they've already battled twice. I think it's going to be uh, Mega Pinsir, Aloma Mola, Latias, Infernape, Mamoswine, and Crobat. Uh, I think it'll be uh, standard defensive Aloma Mola, uh, especially defensive Latias. And I think it'll be um, a really, really, really bulky Crobat with... A little bit of attack investment, uh, mixed Infernape with probably Hidden Power Ice, Grass Knot, Flamethrower, and Mock Punch, uh, Freeze Dry on Mammoth Swine, and prob I don't think he's going to be bringing SD Pinsir. I think he's probably going to be bringing uh, just uh, just regular four attacks Pinsir to hit hard as he can. That's, that's about all I think. Uh, from to extend from that, I kind of think that his Alamomola could either pack like a Mirror Code or even HP Grass, just kind of expecting his, if Mulvone brings Gastrodon, kind of just to hit it hard or get some good damage off, even though it does have its, you know, very good recovery and recover. Ha! Ah, um, but also, I think that he could bring Freeze Dry Mammal Swine yep. to hit Keldeo if, you know, he thinks he can get a free switch in on it. Or Gastrodon, that, that's four times effective. That's, yeah, there you go, that too. Yep. Um, but then from there, uh, from Malone's team, I think he's going to bring Mega Manetric, Keldeo, Gliscor, Fortress, Talonflame, and a wild card in Zygarde. Now, I kind of think this team is going to be very hyper offensive, or rather, we think it's going to be very hyper offensive. Mega Manetric doing its standard Mega Manetric things. Um, I think hidden power value might be Grass. Well, but yeah, Ice makes more sense. Um, no, Grass does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Keldeo, I think some calm mind variant might have substitute, but it's not the you know it, it could go either way. Gliscor I think could be a little bit more offensive. What were your coverage uh, moves for that? I think he's going to probably have a knockoff Stone Edge, Earthquake, and maybe Roost to give him a little bit of health back if he decides to not run uh, Toxic Heal and wants to get a lot of damage off with like say Life Orb or. Uh, even a uh, Earth Plate to hit extra hard against like a Roosting Crobat or a Loma Mola to hit it as hard as he possibly can. Right, and that that would make sense because it would kind of turn into a tank less than rather than his you know his very standard wall ish Gliscor. He's been he's been running Fortress doing its standard Fortress things. Town Flame. Um, I don't even maybe a Sword Stance variant, but even just a regular version kind of does a lot to his team after he gets rid of Crobat. And then Zygar is kind of an X-Factor. Now, we had discussed if he does uh, D-Dance, three attacks, so E-Speed, EQ, and Outrage. Once, what is it, Mammoth Swine gets either very much so weakened, because uh, I believe a neutral E-Speed does between 36 and 42%. Yep. Once he, uh, he weakens it, he could probably get up to plus one and then either destroy or just make a big dent into Hank's team. I think one other thing that I think he might want to pack is Talonflame, because with Talonflame, Aloma Mola is an easy switch in, so if he has Talonflame in on something, say Infernape, he could U-turn on it and get like really, really good switch initiative into Mega Manectric and just force him out. I think that might be something that he needs to have for this battle. That's a good point, too. Maybe even if he wants to get cheeky into that whole natural gift set, yep. that's kind of a stretch if it's going to be a defensive Aloma Mola. Yep. He might actually even run U-turn on Gliscor. That that could be a thing, too. Yeah, there you go. Keep that momentum in his in his favor. Yeah. Because he does have that Volt-turning core thing going on. Yeah, he has a very nice volt turn core. Yep. Actually, two things with Volt Switch, two things that can get U-turn. Go figure. But that's what we think, and 
whether we're right or not, we'll see as this match starts. But as always, we hope you guys enjoy the match, enjoy our commentary, and enjoy all the things that are happening with the playoffs. I know we put a lot of work in, and so have all the coaches that have you know battled and you know edited and everything. So as always, put that, click that like, and do what you guys do. And in the red corner, we have Mulvone with the Cincinnati Loudreds. And in the blue corner, we have Hank of the Winnipeg Aqua Jets. Now to start off. I've never done a live recording before. That's not going to stop me from making this absolutely fantastic. Um, we're just Last gonna... time I did a live recording like three months ago when I was recording with my iPhone, so that shows how long it's been. There you go. And oh my Jesus. That is so... not what we expected. Not at all. Okay. Um, it looks like he switched out the Weavile for Keldeo and Gastrodon for Zygarde. Yep. Granted, I, I kind of I'm not surprised that he didn't bring Zygarde, but Gastrodon does give a really easy stop to Aloma Mola. Um, I would like to know what Hank brought though. That's the only thing. Yeah, we obviously we don't know what you know what what uh, Hank brought, and we aren't gonna go ahead and ask just to, you know kind of spoil it. But well, I guess we'll see. But uh, potential leads. What do you think? Potential leads. If I had to guess, it would either be Mega Manector to Volt Switch or Depending on if uh, Hank brought Mamoswine or not, I could see him leading with the Fortress and Volt switching out uh, from what he didn't like, or setting up Stealth Rocks or Spikes or whatever. I can also see him starting off with Gliscor because I think he's had that whole thing where he wants to get the Toxic Orb up, and it might um, throw off his momentum if he can't get the uh, Toxic Orb boosted um, early on, you know? Yeah, that, that could be a thing. Uh, Gastrodon doesn't get Stealth Rocks, I believe, so I don't see that being a lead. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about, that is about it. On Hank's team, if he brought Mamoswine, I would assume it would be a Mamoswine lead with maybe Stealth Rocks. That would be my guess if he brought Mamoswine. If not, if he brought Crobat, I could see that, or Infernate. Yeah, and I mean, obviously we... we kind of already figure out that only two things, three things on his team can run Stealth Rocks, Mamoswine, and Fernape Exadrill, and who brings the Exadrill is kind of going to be a surprise on our our end because of how, I guess, non-detrimental it is to have the Exadrill in this match. But hey, here we go. Lead off with the Mamoswine. And Gliscor lead, you were right, man. He's 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 been so scared to not get the Toxic Heal off. Hey man, what was it, two weeks See? in a row he didn't get it off? And it, it, it cost him was, not... It was either two or three. Oh, yeah, well. Right here, if Mulvone stays in, he has balls of steel. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. Right, because... I mean, he can't protect the Toxic or Boost, but if he does that, it's going to... Free rocks. Right, and Mamoswine, there's no reason not to predict. If he does want to go for the Ice move early on, he can do that, but on the same token, like, rocks are just way too attractive, because then it forces him to not just go freelance switching over here with two things weak to rocks on his team. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, see, yeah, he, he does have to switch out. He kind of has to. Into Gastrodon, though, that might not be too, too smart just because of freeze dry. Hidden, hidden power grass. Turn one prediction? No. That wasn't HP grass. Um, could that have been HP Fire? That, yes, yeah, HP that fire. had to have been HP Fire. That had to have been HP Fire. Expect it. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that had to be HP Fire for Fortress. But see, right now, Hank is kind of forced to switch out because he doesn't want this thing getting Scald burned. Um, trying to think, what else could he potentially do? If he switches out, he has to go into either Latias or if he brought it, or Umbreon if he brought it. Otherwise, I think he would kind of just be losing momentum. Yeah. Mo mo momentum. There we go. Yeah, freeze dry. That's what I thought. That That's the one thing that I called. That didn't kill. That has to be a Spadef. Toxic? Okay. Okay. Uh, I would kind of expect maybe the could he have been predicting? Because now he's dead. If... Yeah, I don't know what he could. Can this thing live a hit 
from like actually no i think he's he's probably going to save it and switch out into his uh fortress right now because there's no way he's going to go for a hidden power fire because it doesn't kill if he goes into fortress he could rapid spin away potential rocks and then that also gives him a chance to switch this thing in on say um uh aloma mola if he brought it or even umbreon because umbreon can uh not kill with uh foul play so i think that is actually his best bet is to go into fortress right here yeah that's a good good thought process i mean the hp fire though he's seen it so he might be a little bit wary to switch then again if he does switch if he doesn't switch and then hank predicts him to go into fortress it's a free recover for gastrodon yeah but it is i think it is a little bit too early though to kind of try and you know make that move whereas the freeze dry is just way too attractive to knock out something like gastrodon from um, Lavon's team yeah, this early in the game, it's almost you almost need to take kills where they're almost guaranteed. Otherwise, you could just lose so much. Like, like say, like say he went for hidden power fire, predicting that he could potentially lose his mammoth swine to like a scald crit or something like that, where freeze dry just is on an automatic kill. Not worried. They are taking the time. And though. and say he does. Uh, uh, <laughs> into fortress and tank freeze dries that shouldn't do enough there we go freeze dry again he just went for the kill like he should have that was a good call a very good call so now he's automatically down the one thing he had to put a huge stop to Lama Mola with scalding his entire team yeah that What could he possibly go into right now? Because he has nothing. If this is, say, this isn't, this is, this can't be scarfed, because he switched up his moves. So Maynectric could come in, and go. He can't even overheat because of thick fat. Hmm. I mean, maybe it was a focus ash. You know, lead focus That's ash. Tough. It it could have been the only thing that I think he didn't want to have with Focus Sash, or why I wouldn't have brought Focus Sash, is because he has too much priority on his team between Talonflame, Glade with Shadow Sneak, Zygarde with, extra, with uh, Extreme Speed, and Weavile with Ice Shard. So I think that might not have been a good idea. So that's out of, I, don't, I have no idea then, with what he could have been brought for its item. Yeah, Mulbone's really in a tough spot already. Could... He had to have... Yeah, he had to be Focus Sash then. Because not any... He could be Expert Belt. Oh yeah, there you go. That's... I shouldn't even consider that. Could be Expert Belt. Yeah, let's see. Weavile, and then right now he out these things. He, he should be able to kill with a low kick. He should be able to. Yeah, and the low kick I think is very obvious here. Um, Crobat seems to... Yeah. Crobat's a risky switch. But it's also, or even Alamola, any of his walls, frankly, you know, Crobat, Alamola, or even, well, Umbreon, but that doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Lotsy. I was going to say, Latias could be, no, because of I. <laughs> um, Alamola is his only switch in right now, unless he just wants to stack this thing off and go for EQ or Ice Shard to get damage. Yeah, that's true. No, he's switching nope. out. No pursuit. Umbreon. Yep, so he did bring the Umbreon. There's a low kick. Low kick. That did nothing. That's... Well... Umbreon is rather light. That's... And he's light orb. That's really good to see because that means that he can't be choice banded. So that means that I'm pretty sure Latias, if he has the right amount of investment, he can live two ice shards. So that's really, really good to see. And Pinsir could also live an ice shard from, I think, 70%. Uh from an adamant life orb. Right. But, but if he's adamant banned, I don't think he can. So I think a foul play is coming in here. If not, then a wish. Oh, heal bell mail also makes sense. Heal bell. I like that idea. I like that idea. So, that means that he, I think, I don't know how much of a win condition Mamoswine is, though. Because right now with Weavile, Talon flame. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how much of a win condition Mammoth Swine is because I, I don't. 
We don't know the rest of this team. I think that's really us and knowing the rest of his team. Hey man, it's a mystery. We'll figure it Obvious out. Obvious Voltswood wants to actually take. What? What does he have on his team that wants to take a foul play, though? Um. Did he even go foul play? I don't know if he about right. I mean, Mega Man Trek is going to take a foul play. Oh, I. Nothing. You're right. Nothing on his team wants it because outside of the Fortress, everything else is uh, physical. Yeah. So yeah, he does Volt Switch. So if he goes for foul play, he's gonna get some good chip damage. That it oh crit, that sucks. That really sucks. That crit sucks. However, he he can probably live a decent chunk of hits from most things and get off a of wish protect if he has to. So that's not a huge, huge deal. I mean he it goes I'm sorry, go ahead. No no, he could have uh, moonlight or even wish, so he can't get that, that HP back and even pass yeah. that wish if uh, if he chooses to do so. He has been very good in the past, Hank I mean, with the whole baton pass and the passing and making sure that what he needs to stay healthy does get healthy with uh, effective passing of, you know, wishes. Yeah. I'm just more or less worried about Mulvone right now because it looks like Hank is controlling the entire battle. Oh yeah, I mean... That makes sense so far. And like you said, losing Gashrodon he, early kind yeah, of ensures has, that he has uh, simple. Has less. Mulvone on kind of uh, kind of on the ropes. Yep. Yep. Just look. It, so the moonlight, the moonlight really helps. Yeah, I kind of figured that one because there's no there's no weather to kind of obstruct that from from him getting a lot of HP back. I'm just not used to seeing uh, uh, Umbreon with Moonlight. I'm always used to seeing Wish Protect and like Toxic and Heal Bounce, stuff like that. He does pass. go for the Baton Bath. So, now my thing is, he cannot bring in Man He can't. If he goes for a Ball, he will die. Yeah. I At least I'm pretty sure because in front there we go. That that was a really good switch. And this could be his focus sash. Earthquake. Wow. There we go. That was a big old hit that he did. And now he still has his uh, his sturdy a flamethrower. Or a fire blast or anything. And go for a second earthquake and take out this infernate right now. He could. And Gliscor Or he could at this time is a very easy switch for him in case of the incoming fire move. Yep. Wow, that, that prediction right there basically brought it back from losing Gastron so soon because Infernape really did a lot to uh, Mulvane's team. Yeah, especially the Mach Punch against Weavile. Um, I mean, Talonflame obviously is not a switch out for Infernape, but it did take on Fortress, obviously, because Fire Stab. And then, yeah, I mean, it was just it, it was a good utility fast mod. And, and for everybody that's going to be watching this, I know that Mach Punch uh, out, like, deprioritizes Ice Shard or anything that Weavile could potentially do, but Ice Shard or Mach Punch is a guaranteed kill, and it doesn't give the defense drops for uh, late game usage. Yep. So that's why we've been saying Mach Punch over close combat for Weavile. If he... Yeah. See, that that kind of sucks for Mulvone that goes into... Ooh, ooh, well, if he had had slack off, that would have been game-changing. And Priority Braybird is so, so obvious right now. So then what's Just coming in? Defensive Valve Loma Loma. Loma. or even Exadrill or Crobat? Crobat, definitely. If I had to guess, though, I would definitely say a Loma Mola first because of the Regenerator. Easiest Pokemon to get the health back. Yep. Yeah, He's going to sack off the Infernape. Nah, man, we live in this. We live in this. <laughs> live on HP. Damn it! What the heck? Okay. Okay. Right, so that means that's down. So 5-5. Five, five. 48 minutes. 5-5. Five, five. Early game. Dear Lord. He... If he goes into a Loma Mola, that's probably his best bet. 
Paloma Mola with like Scald, Ice Beam, HP Fire does a lot to his team too right now. Oh, I was gonna think Scald, Ice Beam, HP Grass for the uh, Gastrodon. Yeah, he could he could be having that. Yeah, that that actually makes a lot more sense than HP Fire, because. Dang, that Infernape loss was huge. That was absolutely huge. That was huge. It was a great I'm kind of, I'm kind of. It was. It was, and we can't forget that he still has his sturdy intact for late game, so he can send it in and live any hit. So if it comes down to like stalling life orb hits with something, he can do that. Wow, that was rough. Okay, so he does go into Umbreon. Pretty easy pick. With the way that it, it took that hit from, what was it, from Weavile, that low kick, I can kind of think this is defensive, so maybe it, it won't take, well, maybe 50%, maybe a little less from the Town Flame and go for Foul Play. Obviously, Foul Play is the thing that's kind of the scariest part of this Umbreon right now to Mulbone. But yep. besides, I mean, he can go into Foragers, but outside of that, like, nothing else wants. Like we said before, nothing wants to take a Foul Play and take that un unnecessary damage or big damage. I kind of want to run the calc real quick to see how much it would do, but that would take the fun out of He goes for Taunt. Okay, that's... So he's not choice banned to Talonflame. No. Talonflame is going to do so much damage. Oh my lord. 50%. Bam. That did... Okay, so he's leftovers, though. I, I didn't see that last turn. No, I, I saw that already. Right. Okay, right. We still don't know three of his mons. He is preserving Mega Pinsir for the back really well. Yeah, I, I say that. Maybe even Latias in the back as well. Foul play didn't do a whole, whole lot either, so this might actually not be a very offensive Talonflame. This could be kind of a bulk of your Talonflame. It could be Roost, uh, U-Turn, you know, Taunt, Wisp. Yep. Does go for the Roost. So... Foul play, yeah, and this is going to do... 35% looks like. Yep, about that. And after leftovers. So really, having Umbreon in here and wasting his foul plays that he could be using on other things is not really a good idea for uh, bulk up. There we go. There we go. That that could be a huge problem. Okay, so it's bulk up taunt, roost, and uh, brave bird. I'm sorry. Yep. However, with, with Bulk Up, I, does Bulk Up not just keep Foul Play doing the same damage? Because while it raises your attack, it also raises your defense. Shouldn't it yeah, still be doing... it'll just neutralize. 30? But that, that seemed to do a whole heck of a lot more damage. Foul Play on this guy's score shouldn't do a whole, whole lot. Yeah. And he does get the Toxic Heal off, oh. so congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. <laughs> We are good to go. The plane is left. Does he, he want to get his item knocked off? Because I think he could he could, could go for a Toxic, to be 100% honest. Because it would really wear down his walls and Alomomola and Latias. And Synchronized Toxic doesn't really go for the Stealth Rock. Okay. Maybe Baton Pass. Slow Baton Passes are always nice. Amos Wine uh, is, seems very obvious. Yep. Or... Yeah, either goes into Mammoth Wine or Loma Mola. Yep, Mammoth Wine, you were right. It's gonna take a lot. Not not a whole lot from himself, Rock, but enough. And now it kind of comes down to what does he want to take an ice move? Because he can't switch in Fortress, he knows that for a fact. Um, if it is bulky talent flame, he's not packing Stone Edge, which he might not, based on his set, because Freeze Dry, HP Fire, um, and I assume Ice Ground coverage. I think we're going to back in the talent flame. Yeah. On the, even he on could, the rocks. He could, and he won't move a whole lot. If he, if he, he's packing HP Fire and freeze dry, I would have to assume that he's expert belt, and I don't think he would waste a move slot on um, 
stealth rock, I think he'd just be 100% offensive. So he does just sack the glide. I think he might actually be sacking the glide score here. Unless he's spadef glide score. Maybe. Let's see how much this does. Yup, he lived it. That 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 might be spadef. Might be. And he outsped, so he did speed creep it. That's very smart that's on my bones end. Yeah, that's something to note. Another earthquake might not take it out there, that's the thing. That sucks. If he's packing Stone Edge, the Stone Edge probably will kill. But Earthquake won't. Mm. I really have a feeling this is Expert Belt Mammoth Swine. He's going to withdraw the Glyce Core. I want to make Nectric? Is that smart? He's only revealed special moves so far, though. Okay, I shard. I still did a decent chunk for being intimidated. And now Overheat will probably kill. Oh yeah, uh, I definitely agree with that. Yep, there we go, Overheat. He doesn't miss, that's good. I always miss Overheat. Oh my god! He, he lived it. Earthquake, there we go. This thing is gonna die. This has to be Expert Belt. I gotta know that set though, that lived in Overheat. I mean, obviously it's thick fat, but how much investment would he need to know he could live that? <sighs> From... Actually, I kind of want to know, so I'm gonna look that up real quick. Uh, if he's Mammoth Swine, let's take let's take a, a quick look. Mammoth Swine, uh, say he's let's just say he's Focus Sash. Why not? But his set is Freeze Dry, HP Fire, Ice Shard, and Earthquake. So he does know the entire set. That's really good to know, though. Um, well, versus Mega. We know the entire set. He might not know the entire set. Yeah, he might not be keeping track. So, an overheat uh, does 61 to 73 percent with no investment. So he has a lot of HP investment. I think he had like 215. Something like that. That's that. It's really smart, though. He is. He's pretty freaking close to max HP. Because even max HP timid. Uh, overheat still does 52 to 62 percent, and that's with thick fat, by the way. So that has to be a very bulky mammoth swine with expert belt to hit extra hard. I mean, hey, we've already kind of seen a very bulky, supportive town flame. We've seen a special defensive glist score. Like, you know, what else are we going to be seeing too? Yeah. All right. Well, I think it might just be time to sack off the mammoth swine. He's going to go for ice shard to pick it off. I think it might be time to sack it off though. Or knockoff because I shard shouldn't be doing much to Weavile. It, yeah, it is intimidated, so. Yeah, and Ice actually doesn't resist Ice, if I'm not mistaken. I don't. I don't think it does actually. I'm, I could be wrong, but pretty positive. Uh, if he does pick off Mammoth Swine here, that well, he's guaranteed to pick off Mammoth Swine. Okay, so I guess he's using his Rock Fodder. He brought Excadrill. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Ice shard. I can do a lot. Oh wow, that um crit. Damn. That crit sucked. It's two crits now. One that I think that one mattered more than the other one did. Yeah, I think that one mattered a whole heck of a lot more. If this thing is scarfed, will it outspeed Jolly max speed? 88 to 135. It might. He's gonna rapid spin. Scarf rapid spin. There you go. That means Mammoth Swine lives. But now his Excadrill dies. Was that really worth it? I don't think it was because now he's gonna die to Brave Bird anyway. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. I think he should have just gone for Earthquake and killed off this Weavile while he could. Weavile. How many kills has Weavile got in this game? Two? Or one? Um, just one, because the Brave Bird killed the Infernape. You're right, you're right. Wow. I don't think that was a good trade-off. I don't think that was a good trade-off at all. I think that... If Hank loses, I'm going to call it that that move lost in the game. And he has to do something really big, really big to get it back. 
bold prediction right there. What does he go into for this? Umbreon. Life Orb stalling it, maybe? Foul play hitting it? Uh, I'd say uh, the foul play. It's just that Fortress is such a clean switch into this. Easy switch in. That really sucks. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that Hank has a plan to deal with um, with his fortress because right now fortress looks like it walls a lot of his team. Yeah. Baton pass. Okay. There it is. I've been saying this all season, but Hank has done a great job in maintaining maintaining good switch-ins and good matchups because with his use of baton pass, double switches, and even the volt the volt turning uh, cores that he's created throughout the season. He he has amazing uh, intuition when it comes to that. That's that's fantastic. That was a great play. The hardest of reads, as some might say. Yep. What could he go into, though? That's the thing. We've seen Umbreon, Mammoth Swine, Infernape, and Excadrill. Two, yeah, which, two of which are down, and one of which is out-prioritized. Sharpedo! There we go. Now, he doesn't get speed boost this turn. That is something for him to realize, because I think Brave Bird kills from full health. The Sharpedo is kind of sort of frail. Just a little frail. The, yeah. And, and by a little frail, I mean, like, if you flick it, he kind of sort of dies. Oh, I used but... one in the GBA. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Great. If he goes for the... Okay, withdraw Y? Uh, Fortress isn't... There we go. Maybe the Aqua Jet of the Protect, I'd say. Yeah. And if he is nope, Sash, then he didn't... Oh, he's life forward. Now, what he could be, he could be mixed with HP Fire. That's a very that big possibility, and I could see that being a, uh, a smart play on Hank's end. But this that could be a, Fortress or, might also be Spadef as well. It could be. It very well could be. I've seen a lot of careful Fortresses use for, for, Fortresses? For, no, no, you're fortress. right. You're right. <laughs> They've been used a lot. To, uh, to counter team specifically HP Fire. So, and I know that Naive uh, mixed Sharpedo with Hydro Pump and Ice Beam. It's really common, so I don't see why HP Fire would be crazy. I mean, let's be honest, this is the GBA. Like, you you have to do stuff like that. But he's going to switch out. Yep, switch out into Mammoth Swine. Does he get up the rocks again, or does he kill the Mammoth Swine? Oh, there we go. Does kill the Mammoth Swine. So, so that's what I was talking about earlier. He traded off his Excadrill to get rid of rocks for a Pokemon that died to any hit on Switch in anyway. Yeah. That was a really bad trade off earlier in the match. So right now he has Umbreon and Sharpedo with one Mon that we haven't seen yet. Pinsir, Mega Pinsir. Right there. If he's I don't know. I Are we gonna see special Mega Pinsir with HP fire? Oh please don't. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm funny. Big ego. Oh my god. What if Yeah, he can't even he can't even really touch this with like an earthquake unless he sets up a swords dance, can he? Um, and Jarrow yeah. easily fifty percent. Yeah, he, he has to go for the swords dance. Um I, I don't see anything else that he can do. I think he I, when you said that or that Mavone's on the ropes, I think the tides are definitely turned. I think that Hank is kinda of fighting for his, his, his life right here. Yep. Yep. And it all started with Excadrill. Darn. Okay, so he's gonna make evolve. Does he go for the Swords Dance? He does go for the Swords Dance. Wonder how much EQ is gonna do and how much Gyro Ball is gonna do. Rock Slide. Bam. 
Oh, it lives. Wow. And But now he has a sturdy back intact. What did Pincer go for? He went for a sword stance. Okay, I figured. Yeah, he... Yeah, I think as of right now, Mulvone has it in the bag. There's not a whole, whole lot that I would think that Hank could do to this fortress. <sighs> that's that's upsetting, though. It's really upsetting. I know a lot of people did kind of fight for... They really want to see Hank go, to, go on and uh, take on Miguel, but I think the matchup that was more... Exciting, I think, was the Mulvone Miguel matchup because they've they've been they've been the powerhouses in the Hoenn Conference all season. Yep, and I think what I was saying early in the season about how Mulvone seemed to, to not care, I think I'm kind of eating my words right now. I, I really think I am, which is really nice substitute. That's certainly interesting. Substitute? I'm not sure. The switch and the sub are both very questionable. Okay, return. Probably gonna knock out the Gliscor plus two? Yep. Okay. Okay, so, so here's the thing that I'm thinking. He can't substitute again, so he goes into Talonflame. Brave Birds breaks the sub. Talonflame dies. Right. But he goes into Fortress instead, and he's going to do the reverse of what I just said and break this sub. What if he's cussed at Barry? No, he's leftovers. Never mind. I'm stupid. He's leftovers. Haven't trying to think too much. Okay, that returns a lot more than I thought it would. Okay, the Jarball yep. will break the sub. Yeah. And that was really smart because he didn't want to risk the miss. That means that Weavile is a guaranteed switch in to, uh, to, K to KO with them with uh, the Ice Shard priority. Yep. And so does Talonflame, because I believe he still has Talonflame, correct? Yeah, both of which are, well, yeah, okay, no, you're right. Although, based on his speed investment, because of his bulkiness, I don't know how much his speed investment is to out outpace the Mega Pinsir, because then it's priority versus priority. That's very true. That is very true. Assuming he has quick attack, of course. He does still have Umbreon in the back. So, and Umbreon kind of sort of walls both of them. That's true. I don't understand. I think that switch... I'd, I'm going to wait for their commentary, but the switch for the Fortress, of, of, when I'm letting Pinsir get behind a sub, I don't get that. Yeah, that, that kind of ruined a lot. Okay, faint. Does all the wow. damage. Wow. Oh, well, okay, he got, he got good use how to faint then. Did Hank just pull it back? Pull it all the way back. He. So the M oh. So the the runner-up just killed the MVP. Oh my oh gosh! My that was insane. Faint got two kills. Holy crap! 3-0. When it looked like it was about to be a 3-0 for the other side. Oh my lord! I think I'm. 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 A, wow! I was. I'm kind of sort of speechless. That was like a reversal three different times. Early on, mid or mid late ish game, and then just wow, man. Faint Mega Pincer actually worked. I mean, we've seen it earlier, but it actually worked. Wow! Congratulations, Hank the Pidgey, moving on to the next round in the playoffs with a fantastic 3-0. I want to call it a comeback. I want to call it a comeback. He's been here for years. Come on. <laughs> Playoffs. Um, I I don't know what to say after that. It was that was a fantastic match. That that was the best match that you could ever imagine having in playoffs. Yeah, that. Back well, I, I debate some people want a, want an easy six zero in the playoffs, but on the same token, from, from a viewer perspective, yeah, that was a fantastic uh, match that you can ask for just to. That was exciting. It was back and forth. Wow. That was perfect. That was perfect. Oh, my Lord. I still want to know that Mammoth Swine set. I still want to know the Mammoth Swine set. Oh, you mean the item. We already know the set. Yeah, the, the item. I'm sorry.
or and the EV spread because I really want to know what his EV spread was. Well, hey, Hank does a good job in explaining his whole team breakdown during uh, before his matches. Oh my lord, that was awesome. Um, but I mean, with that, that was that was the battle. Uh, you'll you guys will be seeing this after you know their match because this will be going up after like on Monday or so. But we hope you all enjoyed that fantastic playoff match. Yeah, I know we did, and that's certainly one that I'll remember for being exciting and exhilarating and shocking, to say the least. Yeah, very shocking. But as always, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, comments and everything, and uh, support all the content that will be coming out for the playoffs. And as the rounds go on, we'll see, uh, we'll see Hank play Miguel. <laughs>